So let's maybe recap some misconceptions in the cryptocurrencies. The name cryptocurrencies suggests that they involve encryption, but actually no block ciphers or anything or RSA or Algamal is used in cryptocurrencies. I said that the main security in cryptocurrencies comes from uh, cryptographic hash functions and digital signatures. And uh, in Turkey, for some reason, people think that hashing is encryption, but it is not. You might hear sentences like saying, we encrypted it with SHA-256. No, you didn't. It is not an encryption algorithm. Okay. So cryptographic hash functions are used to provide immutability in a blockchain. And digital signatures are used to prove ownership of digital assets in a blockchain. So this is how we use uh, cryptography here. But uh, this was the initially what happened in block, uh, Bitcoin. But since now 14 years passed, and many other areas found themselves in this topic. So different areas of cryptography are also used in the blockchains or cryptocurrencies. So with the advancement in cryptocurrencies, Many other cryptographic topics found their way in blockchains, like zero knowledge protocols. So these are extensively used in some cryptocurrencies, which try to provide full anonymity. So in those blockchains, they also hide the uh, which accounts has what amount of money to which accounts. Okay, so you cannot even see it when you look at them. Post quantum cryptography now become important because if a huge Post quantum computer can be built. All of the digital signature algorithms we are using in all of these blockchains can be broken in uh, constant time. So we have to update them if, in case such a uh, quantum computer is built. So currently there is a NIST competition going on, but uh, the signature sizes are really huge, so they are not suitable for uh, blockchains. So we will talk about post-quantum blockchain security at the end of this course. And finally, lightweight cryptography becomes some, somewhat important because people try to create blockchains and use IoT devices, but not all IoT devices have uh, computational power like a computer. So you might need to use some lightweight algorithms to uh, have performance with your blockchain. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hash functions are used in blockchains for many reasons. Uh, I listed some of them like here. In a blockchain, hash functions can be used for address derivation, securing the block header, securing block data, creating unique identifiers, and creating cryptographic puzzles. So hash functions are used for many, many reasons in uh, blockchains. So for this reason, our first week, I mean, in the next week, we will talk about hash functions in detail and see how they are used in blockchains. Okay, but to give a small recap, there are some old hash functions which are broken, MD4, MD5, and SHA-1. These are the output sizes of these hash functions. MD4 and MD5 are badly broken. SHA-1, we can find now collisions for this, so it might be a problem. But uh, if you want short hashes like SHA-1, you can use RIPE-MD-160, which is still secure. And you can also use SHA-2 and SHA-3. And as an example, Bitcoin Secrypt allows you to use SHA-1, RIPE-MD-160, and SHA-256. But SHA-1 is almost never used in any Bitcoin transactions. OK, so it is included in the opcodes, but I have never seen a transaction that uses SHA-1 because RIPMD is secure and has the same output size of SHA-1. Okay, so here's a, uh, here I actually list some of the SHA-1, sorry, Bitcoin hash uses. Bitcoin script allows SHA-1 with the opcode OPSHA-1, but is not used in practice. Bitcoin script allows RIPMD-160 with the opcode this. Bitcoin uses RIPMD after using SHA-256 for address generation with the opcode OPHASH160. So these two opcodes are different. So if you use this one, you simply use RIPMD. But if you use this one, first the input is hashed with using SHA-256 and the output is then hashed with RIPMD160. So account creation actually uses this opcode. 
So most of the time, if you see a Bitcoin account, this is obtained by using this, okay? And also Bitcoin script allows SHA-256 with this one, but in most cases, especially in uh, mining, we use SHA-256 twice. So instead of this opcode, you use op hash 256, which is actually using SHA-256 twice, okay? So in order to understand the op, uh, Bitcoin script, you need to know what these opcodes correspond, okay? Ethereum is somewhat different in its proof of work algorithm ET hash. Ethereum uses Ketchak. So Ketchak is actually the winner of the SHA-3 competition. So for us, Ketchak and SHA-3 are the same, but here it is somewhat different because uh, Ethereum chose to use Ketchak when the NIST documentation was finalized. So the SHA-3 in the NIST documentation is not the same with the uh, Ketchak here the Ethereum uses. The padding is somewhat different. Okay, this is why we somehow sometimes say it is Ketchak instead of SHA-3. But as you can see, hash functions are used constantly in here. So some cryptocurrencies use multiple hash functions for their hash puzzles. This complexity is expected to prevent efficient ASIC development. So in the case of uh, Bitcoin, it only uses SHA-256 for hashing puzzles. So people try to, initially people use CPU cores and GPUs become general purpose. So people start mining using GPUs. But some people said that if we uh, optimize this code on hardware using FPGAs, then the best optimization can be burned into the silicon and then we can obtain uh, ASICs, which are dedicated devices, just which can only perform this SHA-256 operation. So once you have such a hardware, your CPUs or GPUs cannot compete with them. So people built ASICs for Bitcoin and this is how the mining works. So alternative cryptocurrency said that we want to find such an hashing algorithm so that it will be very hard to build an ASIC for that. So they try to make the problem as complicated as they can. One way to do is instead of using SHA-256, maybe we can use 11 hash functions consecutively. So they chose 11 algorithms from SHA-3 competition and said that this is algorithm X11. So this is actually consecutive use of these 11 algorithms. So even ASICs were built for this. So they said that maybe we can make it more complicated instead of 11, let's use 13 algorithms, then to 15, then to 16, then 16R. This means that uh, instead of using the these 16 algorithms in a specific order, they change the order depending on the block. And then they moved on to 17 and so on, just to make this providing a dedicated hardware for mining hard. Okay. So there are a lot of hash functions actually used in cryptocurrencies. 